Hello and welcome to part one of CAMH REDCap survey training. Now before we begin, I will just point out here that we're using REDCap version 9.1.16. So if you're using a different version of REDCap, things might look slightly different. Uh, or if you're using an older version, certain features may be missing. Uh, so if we come across any features that are only available in version 9.0, I will try to point those out along the way. So the survey module within REDCap is a pretty big piece of REDCap and one that people use pretty frequently, uh, but can o it can also be fairly confusing and complex, especially when you get into more of the advanced survey features. So in this set of videos, we're going to be looking at how to set up your surveys and uh, the different functions and settings that you can use, and also the different methods for deploying your surveys. But before we can do any of that, we actually need to set up a little demonstration form here. So I'm going to go to the online designer and actually I will note that I've already created this REDCap survey training uh, project ahead of time so you can do that if you're following along but first of all in the online designer I'm going to change the title of this instrument to um, smoking screener because that is the little demo project we're going to set up and we'll click on that link to open up our form and we're going to leave this record ID field here the way it is because we're going to be needing that later on so the first field I'll create is just a simple text box and we'll ask for age and I'm going to uh, use the prefix SS for smoking screener and then I'll say age and I will say required and set the validation to integer so we'll have people um, put their age in as an integer and just for best practice we'll put in a range let's say the eligibility for our screener is well we could say the eligibility is like 16 to 50, but for the purposes of the screener, let's just say 0 to 100. Uh, it is required, and we will say save. All right, we'll set up a second field here. Again, we'll just say add fields. Uh, let's do a radio button, and I don't know, let's just go with handedness. No, 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 let's do a better one. Let's say, do you live in Toronto? And in fact, I will change this to yes, no. And I'll say SS, Toron live Toronto, I'll say required. Doesn't really matter. We're just creating a little demo project here. And then the next thing I'll ask is with radio buttons, what is your smoking status? Uh, I smoke cigarettes. I do not smoke cigarettes. We'll say SS status. We'll say required. And then finally, we'll add one more field that says um, do yes, no. Are you trying to quit? SS underscore we'll go with quit. Say required. And then we can add in just a little nice feature here of some branching logic. So we can say if they do smoke cigarettes, this question will only show up because it won't really make sense to ask them if they're trying to quit if they do not smoke cigarettes. And the other thing I'm going to do here is right before this, what is your smoking status question here, I'm going to add in this begin new section uh, field. And we don't need to put a variable name and we don't need to enter anything here. Uh, we just want this little kind of yellowish box to show up. And I'll explain why in a second. Okay, so we've set up our very simple little smoking screener here. And I'm just going to return to the list of instruments. And before we can actually do anything, uh, we need to enable surveys on our project. So we'll go back to project setup, and you'll see that it's the very first option here. So all we need to do is click enable, and we're good. And then we can go into the online designer, and then you'll notice here we have a few more options, and in this case I want to enable this as a survey. And so after we hit enable, you'll see that we're taken to this set up my survey page, which or tab, I guess, uh, which has all of the different survey settings that you can customize for your project. And so essentially, we'll just go through these sort of section by section. So first of all, it asks for a survey title and survey instructions. Now, by default, it will just take the name of the form that you created. 
but for demonstration purposes, I will just change the name here to Smoking Screening Survey. And then we get some default instructions here. Please complete the survey below. Thank you. Which uh, for this is perfectly fine. But if you wanted, you can put whatever you like in here. And it's nice to have this rich text box uh, to make formatting easy. Um, so the next set of options here is the survey design options. So first of all, we can specify a logo. Let's see what we have available here. We've got some CAMH logos. So I will just grab this one. And we have the option, if we're using a logo, uh, we can actually hide the survey title. But I'm going to leave this unchecked for now, just to see how it looks. And the next thing we have here is to use enhanced radio buttons or checkboxes. Um, so by default, it says the standard radio buttons and checkboxes. But these are just kind of the normal little circles and checkboxes you'd see. Um, but if we have a look at what the enhanced buttons look like, you'll see uh, something that looks like this. And I actually prefer this um, because I think it just looks nicer, a bit more inviting. And it also tends to resolve a lot nicer and, and it's more user friendly on mobile devices. So whether if the person's looking at a survey on their phone or a tablet. So for me, I usually uh, just change this to enhanced radio and check radios and checkboxes. Next, we can uh, change the survey text size uh, to a certain degree here. Uh, we can change the survey font. Uh, I'm just going to leave these as the default. And then we have a whole bunch of themes here, uh, most of which I don't think look great, to be totally honest. Um, but you can go ahead and program your own theme, uh, which I've done here by using the CAMH branded colors. Uh, and if you wanted to customize this, you can simply click the customize button and you'll get a whole panel of colors here. And actually I'm going to change the text color here because I don't love the purple text. Oops, wrong one. Uh, purple here and text color is here. And if you wanted to have even more fine grain control, you can click on the more here and get right down to the hex value. Um, which could be important if you're trying to use actual branded colors like I was trying to do in this case with the KMH colors. And I think this might be one of those things, I'm not sure if it's in version 9 of RedCat, but I know it was a later feature where you were able to enter the hex code. So uh, just be aware of that. Um, okay, so I'm happy with that theme. You can scroll down here to survey customizations. And these are kind of, I think, just the general customizations that they didn't really have any other place for. But there's a few important things here. So first of all, uh, in a survey, your questions will be numbered uh, automatically by default. But in our case, because we're using branching logic, the um, auto numbering might not make sense. So in this case, I'm going to set it to custom numbered. Uh, the question display format, we have uh, just two options here. And by default, again, it puts all of your questions on one page. Uh, but for display purposes, I'm going to choose one section per page. So you'll remember earlier we added that section header, and that's what's going to be used to delineate, delineate our pages. Uh, an important point here is that this is useful sometimes, especially for larger surveys. Uh, if you break your survey into sections, every time a person clicks next page, um, your data will be saved. And so that's preferable if you think that people might sort of uh, exit out of your survey sort of mid midway through and you don't want to lose all of your data. Um, so typically I would use this if I have a longer survey. Um, it also just makes it a bit more digestible for people to, to, to work with multiple pages. Uh, we have the option to display page numbers at the top, which I will enable. And if you want, you can hide the previous page button, um, which I'm going to uncheck for now so we can see how that works. Uh, we have a few other options here, so allowing the person to download a PDF of their responses at the end. Depending on your use case, you may want that. Um, I'm just going to leave it as the default no for now. Uh, Survey-specific email invitation, I'm going to come back to in a later video uh, talking about survey deployment. Um, required fields, uh, we have the option here to put this little notification, like this red notification here that uh, certain values are required. Again, this is kind of a, a matter of choice. Um, we have the option to allow respondents to view um, aggregate responses at the end. So, <coughs> so maybe if you're doing some kind of poll or something where you want to show people the answers, you might want to enable that. I don't know if I've ever enabled this myself, actually. But again, it's one of those things that is always kind of project dependent. 
And then lastly, we have uh, text-to-speech functionality, which uh, could be useful for people with a visual impairment. Um, again, I don't think I've ever used this, but it's a nice option to have. Okay, so the next set of options here is for survey access. So you can actually set a limit on the number of people that can respond to your survey. Um, and it says if blank, uh, you'll basically be able to accept as many people as possible. But for example, uh, we use this fairly frequently, um, well, every time, with our REDCap training classes. F so for our sign-up survey, there's a limited number of spots in every class. And so we'll set the response limit to 10 or 15 or whatever the um, number of se seats is. And once that response limit is reached, uh, you can set this custom text here um, for anybody else who tries to access the survey. So it's a pretty handy feature to have. Uh, we have this time limit for completion. So if you had a particular day, or sorry, um, I guess, yeah, sorry, you have either option here. So you can do a relative number of days after survey launch uh, when it will no longer be available, or a specific date and time uh, if you wanted to specify that. Lastly, we have this option for save and return later. Um, so this would be if your respondent, especially particularly if you have a long survey, uh, if your respondent has to leave halfway through or doesn't feel like completing the whole thing, you can enable this feature. And then there's some additional uh, features you can add as well. So if you click this box, uh, it will allow people to return to the survey using the link that you sent them, uh, even without needing a return code. And we'll look at this a bit later. And uh, the other thing is allow respondents to return and modify completed responses, uh, which again might be dependent on your situation. Uh, I'm going to enable it here just to see what it looks like. And then lastly, we have survey termination options. So if you have more than one survey and you want to kind of daisy chain them in a row for your respondents, you can simply click this box and it will just, once they complete one survey, it will just go right into the next one, which is nice. Uh, Otherwise, you can direct them to a URL. So for example, you could just send them to the CAMH homepage or give them some generic text here that says, thank you for completing the survey, which we'll do today. Um, lastly, we have the e-consent framework, which I'm just gonna uh, avoid talking about for now. Um, I might come back to it in a later video, but there's uh, some extra considerations when using this framework. So for now, I'm just gonna um, leave it disabled. And then we do have the option to send the respondent an email just to confirm. Um, but again, this uh, also has some additional considerations and I might cover this in a later video about survey deployment, but for our purposes, I will just say no. So once you're happy with all of those survey settings, you can click Save Changes. And we'll see that our survey ch settings have been successfully changed. And that's pretty much it. You, you technically could be ready to go to deploy your survey now. So I guess actually maybe we'll wrap it up here for part one. And in the next video, we'll look at some options for actually deploying these surveys.